monster in the house. Golden fleece, out of the bottle, dude with a problem, rites of passage, buddy love. Why done it? The fool triumphant, institutionalized, and my personal favorite, superhero. Now Blake Snyder mentions in his very controversial book, Save the Cat, a full-fledged knowledge of hundreds of movies is required if there is any hope of you actually bringing your film to market. He cites the merit of being able to learn from other films. If you're like, no, Alan, my film is unlike anything you've ever seen. Well, I'm sorry, it's been done before. But you are gonna do yours differently. Because by the end of this video, you will know exactly what genres came together in order to form your work of art. Additionally, we all know that there is a primal desire required in our story in order to get our audience interested because we've all read Writing Screenplays That Sell by Michael Haig. Or we've watched this video right here. Defining your movie genre also helps you recall what your film's primal desire is. So again, when you're writing your feature films or your shorts, it's incredibly crucial to recognize the kind of movie you're making so that you don't risk reinventing the wheel and creating cliches. In order to recognize what's been done, you've got to remember what's been done. Hey everybody, Alan Northern here giving you filmmaking tips and tricks. And today we are going to talk about the 10 types of film that can be made to more easily help you define your film genre, help you identify your film's primal desire, and research how films like yours would perform at the box office if it were made today. So if you're ready to get started, please smash that like button. Smash it, because you know I got the juice. Got the juice. Okay. <laughs> But seriously, I have tons of great content in addition to this video right here. So please, smash that like button, it really helps me out. One key in differentiating which movie is which lies in how the film's setup sends our main characters down their journey. So what does films like Saw, It, Conjuring, His House, Jurassic World, Underwater, and Sinister have in common? Well, there's a monster or an entity after all of your main characters in a confined space. With the film It, it's dairy. The Conjuring, a house. For his house, it's his house. Jurassic World, it's the theme park. And for underwater, it's the underground space station. Its primal desire for the most part is to not get eaten by the monster. Even in films when police officers are trying to catch the killer, as seen in Saul. So what are the rules of this genre? Alan, you don't understand, my film has no rules. I don't do rules. No, but hear me out. If you wanna break the rules, it's best to know what the rules are and why they exist. At least give me that. So, first rule, our protagonists are trapped in a confined space. It can be a town, your dreams, or even the whole world. See how I broke the rule there? The idea behind this rule is simply that no matter where your main characters go, they can't escape. They're not safe. Second rule, the main character had to have done something to either create the monster or B, get into the monster's crosshairs. They committed some kind of a sin or a treacherous deed. Sinister. The only reason why Ellison Oswald is in the boogeyman's crosshairs is because he is seeking fame and fortune. That's what makes Sinister so good. That's what makes it so effective because it understands these rules and it connects these rules to the film's central conflict, which is where we get the film's controlling idea. And these concepts elevate the film by teaching the audience a life lesson that gives the film significant impact that we can choose to utilize in our everyday lives. So remember, yes, you can break the rules, but it's important to know why the rules exist to begin with. Use them, bend them to your will, in order to give your movie a fresh take on this genre, because the possibilities are endless. So you may think that films like Shrek, Lord of the Rings, Are We There Yet, and Casino Royale are completely different movies. 
Well, you'd be wrong. Actually, they're kind of the same. Then you'll also know that in poker you never play your hand. You play the man across from you. And you're good at reading people. Yes, I am. Which is why I've been able to detect an undercurrent of sarcasm in your voice. Golden Fleece. Snyder referred to this kind of film as a road trip movie. You have only one choice. The ring must be destroyed. It must be taken deep into Mordor and cast back into the fiery chasm from whence it came. In this film, our hero sets out on a perilous journey in order to find something or do something. But then our hero winds up discovering something about himself that he never knew before. The people, incidents, and all of the chaos that emerges from all of the film's plot points ultimately results in the hero growing and becoming a better or a worse version of themselves. The theme of all Golden Fleece movies is internal growth and how the film's events affect our hero's beliefs. So the hero must learn new things about himself through the film's story events. And this is ultimately what makes your story work. Your job as a filmmaker is to make each and every milestone in the film significant in your hero's progression as a human being. The main thing that makes your film great is how various events in your film made your character change and the degree by which they changed from the beginning to the end. No. This is about a year's pay. What did I do? What did I do? Why is this happening to me? It is you two. If I didn't volunteer to babysit you two little demons, this wouldn't have never happened. And I still have my car. <laughs> Go ahead and cry. I don't care. <laughs> Okay, all right, stop the waterworks. Okay, all right, okay, come on, come on, come on. Stop crying. Now I'm going to challenge you in the comments. Please write in the comments what you believe separates great films in this genre, such as Casino Royale, and good films in this genre, like Are We There Yet? Next up, Out of the Bottle. you such a crick in the neck. So what do you think Aladdin, Cinderella, Bruce Almighty, and Freaky Friday have in common? Yeah, exactly. They're the same movie. This is known as the classic what if tale. So if your story ever asks the question, what if, or I wish I had this and boom, it appears, then uh, odds are your film is out of the bottle. Oh, wish fulfillment? Three wishes to be exact. An ixnay on the wishing for more wishes. That's it. Three. One of those three. No substitutions, exchanges, a refund. So we've got a likable protagonist who comes into contact with a magical creature or entity or object and then grants the character any wish he wants or fundamentally alters the way they live their lives. Why am I in Anna's room? This isn't mine. Those aren't mine. That's definitely not mine. What does Aladdin and Cinderella have in common? Well, in both stories, our hero's environment suppress our hero's deepest desires. And by the end, they both realize something, that being themselves is ultimately going to get them what they actually want. That being themselves is ultimately the way to go and that magic isn't everything. To sum it up, your film's events should teach the protagonist that their perspective is distorted. They're currently going about life incorrectly and the events in your story will put them on the right track. The protagonist must grow in order to survive and it's only then that he or she gets what they really want. So maybe their outlook on themselves is incorrect. Maybe their viewpoint on the world at large is incorrect. But by the end of the film, the audience should leave with a little golden nugget. Now I'm looking to speak to you guys if you're indie filmmakers out there, I want to know what you want to see and I actually want to talk to you so that I can more deeply understand what problems you're facing as indie filmmakers so that I can come up with solutions for your problems. So please, if you're interested in actually talking to me, uh, please leave a comment below and we can connect. Did you agree or disagree? Please let me know in the comments below. I also made a film, it's called The Brotherhood, it's on Amazon Prime right now. And I also have, if you're an independent filmmaker, I have The Clover Key 
which is a camera plate screwdriver and a bottle opener, and it'll help you in your indie film endeavors. There's a link below for that as well. All right, that's it for today. Be sure to stay tuned next week for part two. It's always fun talking to you guys. Until next time, see ya.